In downtown Danbury, Connecticut, Fairfield County's fourth largest city, we were on the trail of some local history. For instance, did you know Danbury was once known as Hat City? It's right on the city seal. We were the center of hatting for the entire world. At the height of our hatting heyday, we manufactured millions a month of hats, fur felt hats for men, and then sent them out into the greater, wider world. Indeed, by 1900, nearly a quarter of the hats sold in the U.S. were made in Danbury, a distinction and a profession memorialized today outside City Hall. Not an easy job. Oh, gosh, no. Bridget Gurton also led us to the front of the Danbury Public Library, a truly fascinating, if little known figure. She's 16 years old. She's traveling towards Danbury. And she's warning the people of the countryside around her because they need the colonial militia to get to her father's farm. She was Sybil Luddington, one of the youngest heroes of the American Revolution. In April 1777, British troops marched on the Connecticut colony's vital arms depot in Danbury. Luddington's father, Henry, a colonial colonel, needed to raise the alarm. His young daughter, it was decided, would make a dangerous ride into the night to do it. He hoisted her up onto this giant horse and he gave her this really big stick because there was no way she was going to be able to get on and off the horse. And she's knocking on the sides of houses and she's saying, get up, get up, the British are going to burn Danbury. So really, she was a 16-year-old female Paul Revere. In a way, yes. It was dangerous, it was scary, it was important, and it was done by a young woman named Sybil Luddington. It was lunchtime, and having already sampled one local diner, we had only to move down the street to sample another. How lucky can one city or visitor get? We have a very cheers-like atmosphere. Everybody seems to know everybody. 90% of the people I've recognized, I've seen them before, they've been here before. George Sarafagas is the second generation of ownership of Danbury's Holiday Diner, but there's been a diner at this White Street location since the 1940s. When my dad bought this place, I was 14, and that was my first job, I was the busboy here. I think I'm the only kid in America that hated snow days because if it snowed and there was no school, we were going to work. The former busboy eventually went into finance, but the lure of the diner never left. It pulled me back, it pulled me back. Yeah, I love it, It's I love the people. Clearly, the feelings are mutual. George is great, he knows everybody, and he's always willing to tease people and have fun. He's not stuffy. <laughs> no, it's not. Even I was coloring outside the lines a bit here. A rare milkshake for me instead of coffee at a diner, which is how you can tell this is lunch instead of breakfast. Milkshakes have become a signature here in flavors ranging from coffee to cannoli to pina colada. I'll drink to that. Mm. Just across the street at the Danbury Railway Museum, their thing is trains, a lot of trains. We bring railroading past and present together here. We have about a 10 acre yard and that's uh, situated right in the heart of downtown Danbury. And surrounding our yard is actually active uh, Metro North commuter railroad tracks. All trains all the time at what was Danbury's Union Station until the state cleared the tracks for the museum in 1996. Today, more than 65 individual pieces of historic rolling stock line the yard from the famed 20th Century Limited to the prized and proud number 1455, one of the only surviving locomotives of the famed Boston and Main Railroad. Wow. Engineer, fireman, would have sat here. Yep. And who could resist pulling that cord? Is it? Go ahead. It never gets old, man. No, no, it never does. No, we'll stop. Uh, the staff stop. here is entirely made up of volunteers who also make it possible for visitors to take a short ride out from the former station. How you doing? <laughs> volunteers like engineer Don Conan learn to drive this vintage 1948 diesel locomotive. What is it you love about trains, being here? People, working with the kids, it's a lot of fun. Um, I originally got interested in this just because of the historical aspect. Yeah. I was never a train buff as a kid, but the history got grabbed a hold yeah. of me. You love driving a train? I love everything about it. That sense of history, even for those too young to have known it, keeps grabbing here. 
and keeps rolling along. Needless to say, trains in Danbury go way back. Oh yeah, and hopefully we'll stay together for a while longer. So does the Danbury train station look familiar? Well, if you're a big Alfred Hitchcock fan, it just might. The station was used in Hitchcock's 1951 classic film, Strangers on a Train. Naturally, Ted had to make a point of standing in the exact same spot on the platform where the legendary director himself once stood. In the movie, Danbury's name was changed to Metcalf. Who knew? Still to come.